Hi there everyone and welcome back to the shop. This is the new shop now and I am I am so excited to be back. I know that for you guys, you haven't really taken a break. You've been getting videos this whole time. For me, I've had like three weeks off and I am uh, I'm very, very glad to be back. Hopefully I can get back into the swing of things pretty quickly. Uh, I figured for the first build in the new shop, um, because I'm still kind of getting some stuff set up, but uh, you know, I needed to get back to filming and I was kind of itching to, to get back anyway. So I decided that for this week's build, I'm going to do some Star Wars wall art. It's been actually, well, no, I was going to say it's been a minute since I've made something Star Wars, but for you guys, the last build video you had was something Star Wars. But like I said, for me, it's been three weeks since I've been able to be in a shop uh, making anything. So I'm going Star Wars on this one and we're gonna do some Star Wars wall art. For this wall art, I'm going to be building a droid interface panel. Um, so you know, like the little socket that R2-D2's arm will like go into and it starts turning a thing to unlock doors or you know, talk to chips, whatever he's doing. Um, I'm gonna make one of those, um, the, but the whole panel around it. So um, for that, I obviously already have everything cut out. Everything is right here on the table. Um, I mean, all the main components anyways, we're gonna be putting some other cool stuff in this, but all of these components were cut out on my CNC machine and something I haven't done in a minute, which I realize I need to, it's, I mean, I might as well. Um, the files for these are going to be on uh, our website. You, so you can head over to wampratcreations.com. The link will be down in the description, but you can head over there and download these files for free. And uh, that way you can either plug them into your CNC machine or even a 3D printer. They'll work for either one. Um, or you could just use it, to, use it to get measurements off of and you can cut these pieces out in a more traditional way. Um, but yeah, those are your guys's, and I would love to see if you guys decide to uh, tackle this build with those files, please send it in to me either uh, through the website or on social media. Just let me see it. I want to see it. I think that'd be really, really cool. Um, but without any further ado, let's get to this build. So the first thing that I need to do is because these are cut out of MDF, we all know MDF is wonderful stuff because it machines so well, but um, it's very, very absorbent. So I need to put on some sanding sealer for that. All right, have my sanding sealer and I, I filmed the intro of this earlier and it was way too hot in here. This garage gets really, really hot. I mean, it's a hundred plus degrees outside right now. I'm in, you know, the Southern California uh, desert and it gets pretty hot, but um, this garage gets so hot. It's still pretty hot, but I filmed that intro and I was like, I gotta get out of here. So I'm back now and we're on to the, uh, the sanding sealer. Now, I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this yet, but I, I use chip brushes for this because I'm going to sand it after, so I'm not particularly worried with the uh, with how the finish looks with this chip brush, but because remember, like I said, these chip brushes are really cheap, and that's the great thing about them is they're essentially just disposable. You use them once and then throw them away. You don't need to worry about upkeeping a brush, but um, they don't give good finishes. Um, so, I mean, you might be able to cut out the sanding step um, if you use like a nice brush, but it's not really worth it to me. I'll just take the palm sander to these and knock it back with some 220 grit that usually works out fine. Um, but I'll usually do, I usually do like two coats of this, um, just enough to 
make sure I have really good coverage on everything. Uh, this stuff you could actually kind of build up on if you let the coats dry in between. Um, but two coats is enough to where it doesn't take a ton of time to dry. By the time you're done putting, depending on how big the piece is, uh, by the time I'm done putting one coat on something, um, that coat has pretty much dried already and I can put a second coat on. But the more that you start putting on, the more that, um, the longer it takes to dry and uh, you start just kind of digging into other layers from down below. And it can be kind of a pain. So if you're going to do any more than two layers, I suggest letting it, letting it really dry for a minute. But if you're just doing one or two light coats, dries pretty quickly, which is really nice. And by the way, that's not just this brand of uh, sanding sealer. I've used a couple different brands and they all work about the same. I don't really have a preference just happens to be that uh, that brand uh, is the one in my, well, what used to be my local hardware shop. Now that I've moved, I actually don't have a really good, there's a hardware store that's down the street, but it's real small. They don't have much. So I'm gonna have to start planning my trips to the hardware store a little better. Um, I can't pull any more of those, you know, running to the store real quick because I forgot something. So I need to start planning things out a little more and making sure that I have all the necessary hardware before getting started on something. We'll see how that actually works out. I mean, you know, the best laid plans in my hands, you know, they're kind of iffy. Can you guys tell I'm sweating? It's it's still hot. It's like almost 10 o'clock at night here and I'm I'm still sweating and I'm not working hard. It's just it's just hot. Um, but it's time for some more pinning. And I know you guys have watched me pin tons of stuff, but I mean this a pin gun makes this job so much easier. Yeah, you could do this in a myriad of other ways, but I mean, this makes it so fast. I love this. By the way, actually, you know what? This is a great opportunity to show you guys something. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to so explain this so you guys can understand what you're looking at. So this is my top piece and this is the side. I have the two corners pinned at a good angle, but you can see that the, the side is kind of poking out a little bit. So I need to push it in. Now, if you uh, started pinning on a corner and then just started working your way over, it's kind of hard to get that in. But the reason I start with the corners is so that now those are in place and I can press that in where it needs to be pressed down on the top to keep it in place. Then I can bring my pin over and pin it right where it needs to be. And then maybe just one, or uh, I'm sorry, two more, just to make sure that this stays in the correct orientation. But this is where pinning is great because I was able to walk this in to where, like I said, I started out on the corners and then uh, I was able to walk it in in the middle so that it's, it's flush with the, uh, with the top portion. 
All right, hopefully you guys were able to see that. I know it's not the best lighting, um, but uh, that is one of the great things about working with this kind of thin material. This is only quarter inch thick MDF, so it, it can tend to bend, especially if you're not storing it well. Um, so that's a great way to kind of fudge things along to fit as you're going. So, other than that, I mean, I, I might have told you guys all the secrets I know about using pins. Um, you know, the, uh, the main danger with using a pin nailer or any kind of, uh, you know, kind of almost automatic thing where you don't have complete control over, um, you know, the actual, uh, pin coming out, it can be, uh, it can be pretty dangerous. So I've, I've told you guys before, but keep your fingers, uh, pretty far away. You want to give the the area that you're pinning a wide berth because these things come out all kinds of crazy. But even with stuff that you have a little more control over, like using a hammer can be quite dangerous. I actually just almost cut my pinky off. Um, well, the, the tip of my pinky off assembling some shelves. I was using a hammer and completely missed and like impaled my knuckle of my pinky on the side of a, a metal shelving and uh, yeah, it like cut me down to the bone. That was last night. It was, I was not happy. I was trying to hurry up to get things ready so I could start filming today. And um, I'm not gonna show you guys a close up view because it's kind of gross. But, um, but yeah, I was hammering, I missed, I put my pinky right into the shelf and then I looked and I could see the bone. So I was like, that's, that's not good. So I had to go in while my wife was sleeping and, and quietly get a bandaid from the bathroom. It's, uh, yeah, wasn't a good night. I was a little upset after that, but I'm okay. I made sure to clean it well and my pinky will recover. I gotta say though, hand injuries scare me. If I lose my hands, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's time for paint. And thank you to everyone who gave me uh, suggestions on a uh, more ergonomic solution to uh, spray painting because um, as some of you may know, I mentioned in a um, previous video that I've been dealing with some carpal tunnel type symptoms and I think it's from the, I use a lot of spray paint and if you do use a lot of spray paint, you find that it's really hard on your hands after a while. Um, so it got to the point where my hands were kind of, they would like lock up and it was really hard to like get them out of whatever state they were locked in. And then they, for the rest of the day, they were kind of weird. So, um, I asked for solutions to that. Some of you guys pointed me in the, uh, the direction of some of those pistol grips for the, um, spray paint cans that you could just kind of clip onto the top. Those sound awesome. I haven't had a chance to pick one up yet, but I'm gonna give them a try. Uh, but I've been really busy. Um, but I will be picking up one of those and I'll let you guys know how it works out. I don't want to cover my brand new workbench and spray paint. That'd be bad. Okay. I need the thing I'm painting. Well, it's a couple things, but this one's kind of big, so we'll start with that. I need my spray paint. Okay. 
Here we go. Okay, all of my pieces have been painted and before we can get on to assembly, I'm actually going to do something else because, um, I mean, this would be cool just put together as is, but it's not, it's not enough. Um, I am going to be adding a very small amount of electronics to this in that I am going to add one, two, three, four LEDs and probably four LED strips on the inside of the box. So let's get to that. All right. And I need the connectors for the LED strips. I think that uh, I actually need to use the power supply that the um, the LED strips came with because it has this kind of funky connector on it that, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Am I in frame? Hmm, not really. There we go. Now I'm in frame. All right, so as I was saying, I think I'm going to have to use this, uh, 12 volt power supply that came with the LEDs because I really don't want to mess with changing the connectors on the LED strips. So I'll just splice in my LEDs into that circuit before it gets to this. Um, that should be fine. Yeah, that should be fine. All right, so I need one, two, three, four LEDs. And I'm going with all red LEDs on this one. Um, of course, if you guys choose to take on this build, you can use whatever color you want. But I'm feeling red. All right. I have all of those. And now I need to think about my order of operations for this. So I guess... I'll start with the LED strips. Let me see. Those two can go there. It's not quite long enough for all of that. That might work. Kind of have them off center. Well, I, what kind of connectors do I have? These LED strips that I have, they, they came with four of these 12 inch uh, strips and then a ton of different kinds of connectors so that you can wire them together. It's a nice Y connector that'll probably go to, yeah, that'll probably go to the connect the power supply probably should have looked at all this before I started. But oh well, that's a really long one. I tend to plan out some portions of a build and then kind of figure it out as I go for the rest. Okay, I have a really short one. Let's declutter this a little bit. I'm not using you. All right, so I have two very long straight connectors and one Y connector. And then I have the power supply. And I think I'm going to mount these. Well, I guess if I'm going to do it like that, it makes sense to have the Y connector there and then, oh yeah, yeah, I can do that. Okay, all right, 
Let's plug these in. That's the nice thing about these kind of plug and play LED strips. As long as you have the right connectors for what you're doing, it's no problem. You just push them in. You just push them right into the connector. Okay. That should work. I have a little bit too much slop in the amount of wire that I have. That's okay. We can deal with that. Okay. I guess let's just mount those in there. Hope that I know what I'm doing. I don't, but let's hope it works out. Oh, you know what? Before I do that. I'm going to plug one of these in, just so that I'm not fighting it later. All right. Now let's get this in there. All right, one is down. Two more to go. Two more to go. Two more to go. Two more to go. Did I say three more to go? If I did, that's embarrassing. It means I can't count to three. I had two more to go. Now I just have one. And it is down. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of spare wire floating around in there, but that's okay. I shouldn't really... I can tape them down if I really want to. Oh yeah, I had a whole fourth one. I don't need it. I can save that for another day. <clears throat> okay, so those are all put in. Now, what I want to do now what I want to do, I don't need that. These are trash. Let's clean up my work surface a little bit so I can think clearly. <clears throat> okay. I think what I want to do is splice in the LEDs like halfway through this. That way I can still connect this to the power supply and then have the power supply come out of the bottom of this. And the nice thing about this is it actually has a little switch on the, uh, on the path to the power supply. So I'll be able to turn it on and off um, without having to unplug it or turn off the power to that outlet. Uh, so that's kind of nice actually. But that means that I need to cut this and then Yeah, just attach all of the positives together on this end, all the negatives together on this end, and then pull them back into this. It should work. I'm not at all competent with electronics, like at all. So I might be totally ruining this, but I mean, that stuff makes sense to me in my head. Hopefully I'm right. I don't know. A lot of this is just figuring it out as you go. Oh, but you guys are going to be a pain to pull apart. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, that's more than enough to work with. Little tip, um, even if I pull the camera closer, it's going to be kind of difficult to see. But on, um, well, let's see. Let's see if I can adequately show you this. Okay, yeah, that's kind of working. So, you can see on, all right, you can see that on uh, this wire on the right side, it has these solid bars. Um, always check, 
but that is <clears throat> more times than not the indicator that that is the negative cable. Um, a lot of appliance wires um, will mark the negative cable with solid bars going down. Um, and then the positive will just have whatever else. But you can be fairly positive that um, if you're working with an appliance like this, where it's kind of a pre-made product, the, uh, the negative wire will have like solid bars um, on it. And the positive one usually just has, you know, like power, re like whatever the wire is rated it'll, for, it'll have that information on there. Um, but yeah, that's a nifty, quick way of figuring out which wire is positive and which is negative. Okay, I think before I even put those into that, I'm just gonna go ahead and wire them together because they'll all reach. I'm not, I'm not worried about the reach of these. That's what I love about these pre-wired LEDs. They have a good amount of wire on the end. So most of the time, unless you're like really wiring up something that, that's really big and LEDs are far apart from each other, you can usually just get away with the wires um, that are already on there. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if my thinking on this circuit is correct. I hope so. Hey, they all light up. All three of the strips, all three of my red LEDs. Oh my goodness. I didn't mess this up. That's awesome, because I was actually kind of worried about that. I was actually really worried about that. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't want these to get jumbled up and start to cast shadows if they get over the LEDs, so I'm gonna tape them as out of the way as I can, just so that they stay put. And I don't know if this electrical tape is really the right answer to that problem, but we're gonna give it a try because it's what I have out right here. Yeah, it seems like it'll do the trick. Nothing's really gonna be pulling on these. They just need a little bit of Just need a little bit of convincing to stay out of the way. There, that should do it. Okay, now get everything else out of there. I guess I can actually turn this off so that I'm not staring directly into bright lights while I'm working. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think now it's time to plug the LEDs into their pre-drilled holes on the front face of this, which means I need some super glue. Keep them inside. And I'm going to go with the gel super glue because I'm actually all out of uh, kicker spray. 
And I don't want to make a mess of stuff. Okay. Let's turn that over. Doesn't really matter which LED goes where. And I know this is going to kind of be a stretch at the moment, but it won't be once it's in its final orientation. So I'm going to scoot this a little closer. Okay, there's that one. There's that. Okay. Boom. They're all in. Look at that. This is turning out to go pretty well. Of course, this is a new bottle. I need to shake it up a little bit. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Normally for something like this, I would use hot glue so that it's not as permanent and one of these LEDs goes out. Um, I like to be able to go back and take it out pretty easily and hot glue is really good for that. But for this, I'm not, I'm not really planning on uh, having this on all the time. So the LEDs will last quite a while. All right. I'm going to give that super glue some time to dry and then when I come back after that is done drying we can start dressing this up and doing the final assembly ladies and gents we're almost there I forgot I almost forgot an important step um, that also is going to require some super gluing on this side of the front face on the back side of the front face and then Oh, my lights aren't on. There. Now you can see me, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I need to glue some pieces onto the back of this. And they are these pieces of acrylic that I cut. Or, uh, I'm sorry, I, I did cut them. But uh, that I painted red. And uh, so I'm just going to peel the protective backing off of these. Figure out my, yeah, that side. Figure out my spacing so that I don't screw it up by gluing one down too early. Make sure that everything fits the way that it's supposed to. Then I can glue it down. I can't tell you how many times I've done something like this. Glued the first piece down without double checking with the other piece that it needs to line up with and it just creates problems which is not what you want in the shop so let's see that that should do it that should do it right there all right I'm also actually going to, here's my pen. This might be a little overkill, but I'm gonna trace the edges of this so that I know I'm putting it back in the right spot. Because if I don't, my boxes won't go together right. You know, the bottom box and the front face, they won't go together right. And that, that's a bad day, man. I don't want to deal with those problems. I don't want them. So, I'm just going to take the extra step. Like I said, it might be a little overkill, but I need to make sure that I have enough room so that this can mount onto the bottom box. And I think... I think that'll be enough room on all the sides, which is perfect. So now, 
you know what I could do? I could just leave them in place and glue the edges. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to leave them right there and use this gel super glue to go around the edges and just glue it like that. That way I don't have glue seeping out through these, uh, through those slots that I cut in the front face of this. Oh my God, this is such a better solution. I don't know why I was going to lift it up and put glue on the other, on the underside of these and that would have been a mess. And this will be more than enough hold. This isn't going to be you know, thrown around all over the place. This is going to live on a wall and then basically not move till the next time I move, which by the way, moving is terrible. I just, as you guys know, this is the new shop. I'm just got here. I've, I've been in this house for about three weeks now, but man, moving is such a pain. This move made me realize that I have maybe three good moves left in me, like ever. And then wherever I'm at then, that's just where I'm at. That's, that's where I'm ending my journey after three more moves. That's my goal for my life, just to be where I want to be after three moves from now. And I'm going to put just a little bit between the two. And let's see, do I want to put some glue? Yeah, might as well. Might as well put some glue on this edge. Why not? Better to have it there and not need it than to put it all together and then have one of these fall inside the box and I have to take it all apart. I am engineering this box so that I can take it apart at a later time. But the, the more time I'm spending with this, the more I'm questioning whether I actually want to do that or not, whether I just want to pin it down to the box. I might pin it down, but I'm not sure yet. So I want to leave myself the option of uh, being able to remove the, um, the front face from the box or not. Because like I said, this isn't going to be on all the time. So the LEDs should last a long time. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm just going to pin this down. I'm not going to worry about making this removable. But because of that, this is not good electronics, by the way, but I'm going to add just a little bit of super glue to these joints where I should have soldered all of these together, um, but instead just use electrical tape. And uh, that should stop anything from pulling out. It shouldn't, they shouldn't be under any pull, but, um, but just in case, I've had it happen before, or I've done joints like this, and uh, they just they come apart after a while. The, either the tape fails, or you know something fails, and then they come apart. You go to turn it on one day, and it's not turning on. It's because some wire got disconnected because I just taped them together. So the super glue should make that permanent, and. Uh, and yeah, so now I need to let this glue dry. You can flip it over, pin it down, and then we'll get on to dressing it up with some greeblies. Okay. That looks pretty already. Oh, 
All right. Now, got all tangled up here. All right. I'm gonna turn you off for a moment. And let's make sure all the LEDs still work. Yep. Oh man, this is gonna be cool. I can't wait to show you guys this. All right, so, but now we need to continue on with dressing up. And uh, I made this, uh, this little frame. This is included in the, uh, the files that you guys are gonna be getting. And um, I think this piece of engineering, getting, getting these holes to match up with these is uh, pretty non-trivial. That's why I went with the CNC machine for this. Um, like I said, you don't have to. It just makes things a little easier. All right, I'll get this all lined up. And then we'll just go ahead and pin this down. I did have one blow through over here. Clip that off real quick. All right. Let's try to make sure this is lined up. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Let's get to pinning. All right, frame is down. Now, it's time for the socket. So I think I have all of my greeblies picked out, but I forgot about something and I need to take care of that now because I didn't before, which I probably would have before, but that's okay. It's not too late. Um, I need to add some pinstriping. So I pulled out my white pinstriping tape and I need a X-Acto knife and a straight edge.
right, you guys, we have all of our Greeblies on. This is completely assembled. And now, let's turn it on. Ooh, man, this looks super cool. I'm actually, I was, I was a little worried about the, uh, the lights being a little too close, the LED strips being too close to the acrylic, and I thought they would kind of cast off some hot spots, but that's actually looking really good. I am super pleased with the way this came out, and now I have an awesome piece of Star Wars inspired uh, wall art that I can hang up somewhere in the shop. I need to figure out where I'm gonna put it, but this is totally going up in here. That is Awesome. Now, like I said, the link is going to be in the description for the files that I use to make this. Um, they're totally free, so don't worry about that. Um, that is the files for the front face, the uh, different components for the actual droid interface, the socket here in the middle, and, um, and then the frame um, that goes around and that has all of these cool little uh, cutouts in it. So, like I said, you could either use those to 3D print them or cut them out on a CNC machine. I'm sure it would probably also work with the laser cutter. I don't have a laser cutter. I would love to have one. I am working on that at the moment, but alas, I do not have one yet, but I'm pretty sure these files will work with that. So um, if you have one of those, you can also go pick those up. If you do pick those up and you decide to take on this build, I would love to see it. Please let uh, either send it to me on um, uh, through our website or on social media. You can tag us in it or just DM it to us. I would love, love, love to see them if you guys do take on this build. And I would also love if you guys do it a little differently. Um, I love to see people's different people's interpretations of the same thing. I think that's really cool, really exciting to kind of put your own stamp, um, your own kind of artistic uh, interpretation onto, uh, onto something that already kind of exists. This is not exactly how the, this is very closely based on a droid socket from Star Wars. I believe this one in particular shows up in Cloud City. I, I'm not positive. It's, if you search droid interface on Google and hit images, this is what comes up. It's not exact at all, but, um, but it's pretty close. You guys, will, uh, you guys will recognize it pretty easily. But thank you guys for sticking around for another scratch build. I had a ton of fun with this. It was a pretty quick build, a pretty easy one, which is what I was wanting, like I said. It's been probably three weeks since I've been in the shop making anything, maybe a little bit longer than that. And um, so I kind of needed something a little, a little easy to kind of get back in the swing of things. But um, yeah, we are in the new shop now. We are still coming out with two videos every week. It might be going up soon, I'm not positive, but at least two videos every week, a show and tell every Wednesday, and then a build video every Friday. If you guys have anything that you guys want to uh, uh, see built or uh, want to see me talk about more, just go more in depth on, on a subject, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm always checking those out. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything. You can also hit the notification bell right next to the subscribe button. That will let you know anytime that we come out with something that way you don't miss anything um, there's a bunch of cool links down in the description check those out there's some cool ways to help support the channel number one 
is Patreon. Now I'm sure you guys are all familiar with what Patreon is, so I won't talk your ear off with that. But that is the best way for you to help support the channel, aside from just subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. But if you want to take it a step further, check out our Patreon. That allows me to give you guys some cool stuff in return for helping support the channel. For those of you who do already support us on Patreon, or if you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Your guys' support and, uh, and feedback in the comments has been wonderful. I really, really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else for you guys. Thanks for sticking around. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.